Hi everybody, Dr. Bill Crawford here, psychologist, speaker, author of four books, host of two PBS specials. Here today to talk about the concept of mistakes. I know this is something that I've talked about in other videos, but I thought it deserved its own video, its own focus, because I see so many of us using this concept in a way that gets in the way of us creating the life we want and gets in the way of us being influential with others, gets in the way of us helping them learn from their mistakes. So first, I probably ought to start with this recognition that we make these, don't we? Anybody ever made one of these? <laughs> okay, so unless we're gonna ascend any time this afternoon, we are gonna make some mistakes. We, we are really mistake-making creatures. So if we take that as a given, then the question is, how do we want to deal with mistakes? Because I think in some ways we've been taught to use the pain of the mistake as a way of keeping from making the mistake again. I mean, when we were little kids and we made a mistake and we would get punished or not, depending on how bad we felt. I remember when I was a little kid, if I could feel really, really bad and, and summon some tears, my mom and dad went, well, you know, he's feeling bad enough. I guess we don't really have to make him feel worse. And the philosophy there was you made the child feel bad about the mistake and that fear of the mistake or pain around the mistake kept them from making the mistake again. Now, when this is a fight or flight situation, you put your hand on a hot stove, maybe there's good information there. But in terms of how we see ourselves, I think we've taken that concept and become our own kind of uh, uh, parent in some way. Like when we make a mistake, we kind of go, stupid, stupid, what was I thinking? I can't believe I did that. And we kind of beat ourselves up. There's a quote I have that says, you know, beating ourselves up is really beating ourselves down. And for those of you who follow my life from the top of the mind philosophy, that is literally true. We are beating ourselves down into that lower 20% of the brain where fight or flight is really our only option. Fight means I didn't make a mistake. It was somebody else's fault. You can see people do that all the time. Flight means, oh yeah, I guess I don't deserve to live. I'm a horrible person. Just, just beat me now. In some ways, we diminish ourselves based on that mistake. Not only do we do, do that with ourselves, we do that with our kids, we do that with those in our organization, we do that with our family, trying to get them to learn from the mistake. I'm going to suggest we don't learn from this lower 20% of the brain unless it's a fight or flight, physically dangerous situation. What we really want when someone makes a mistake, including ourselves, is to get really clear, okay, what did I learn from that? How am I going to do that differently next time? So, here's the way I'm going to encourage us to look at mistakes. Rather than seeing them as a judgment about our worth as a human being or the worthiness of our kids or our employees or our family, I'm going to encourage us to see a mistake as an action that we took that missed. It's a mistake. You know, in the movies, when they make a mistake, they just take the scene again. But have you noticed nobody goes, stupid, what did you blow that line? What is wrong with you? They know because they may have to take that scene over and over and over and over, 20, 30 times to get it right. And they know if they beat each other up as a result of their mistakes early on, they'll never get it right because, again, it goes into that lower part of the brain. So what I'm going to suggest we do is to see our mistakes as actions that we took that missed. Did you know that the original meaning of the word sin was an archery term? It meant to miss the mark. So when there is an action that we took that missed, we can say, okay, good information. Knowing what I know, how would I do that differently next time? If our kids make a mistake, okay, <laughs> knowing what you know now, how would you do that differently next time? Because that's where behavior change happens. That's where the learning is applied, not in the past, but in the future. So I'm going to encourage you to look at this concept, see if you have been taught to use it in a way that you would recommend to someone you love, or if you want to change to this perspective on seeing mistakes as good information about what didn't work, a action that we took that missed, and how we want to do it differently next time, and how we want to help others do it differently as well. 
I hope you're enjoying these videos. I am having a ball bringing them to you. If so, please hit the like button. You know how Google and YouTube pay a lot of attention to that. If you want me to come and do a presentation for your organization on dealing with difficult people or stress or leadership or feedback skills for supervisors or parenting, how to get kids to do what you want, let me know. Go to my website, BillCrawfordPhD.com, or just Google Bill Crawford, and I'll come up on the first page. Um, hit the contact, contact button. Let me know what you're interested in, and I would love to talk with you about that. Same thing if you're interested in working with me as a psychologist, life coach. If you're interested in how this new philosophy on the brain can help you become more influential in your life and in the lives of others, go to the website, hit the con contact button. Let me know what you're thinking. In the meantime, Here's to you bringing more clarity about the mistakes that we make in our life and more confidence and creativity to the learning from them. More clarity, confidence, creativity to everything you do. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.